Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice in the Giant Bookshelf. In today's video, I'm going to be ranking the Women's Prize for Fiction long list books that I've read so far, and I'm also going to be predicting the upcoming shortlist. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books and in today's video we're going to be talking about the Women's Prize for Fiction 2024 and on Wednesday it is going to be the shortlist announcement for this prize. I have been attempting to read the long list ever since it came out in March and the progress I have made through this long list so far has been that I have attempted 10 of the books out of 16 so far and that breaks down to three books DNF'd, one book that I'm still currently reading at the time of filming and therefore six books that I have read in their entirety. So that does mean I've got six books left to read so before I tell you my personal ranking of the books I've read so far and before I get to what I predict the judges might do on Wednesday in terms of the shortlist, let me briefly run down with you which are the six books that I still have left to read. And I'm going to do this in order from the book that I'm most interested in still getting to, to the books that I'm least interested in still getting to. Any of these books that are shortlisted, I will definitely give a fair go to. I will hopefully read them all. I would really, really like to read the full shortlist. So that's the first thing to say. And the second thing to say is of the three that I've DNF'd, there are none of those three that would be too difficult to go back to reading if they were to be shortlisted next week. This is the book that I'm currently reading, The Wren the Wren by Anne Enright. So I haven't finished that yet. I am nearly halfway through it uh, at page 92. So I don't have any thoughts on that one in particular yet, but we will come to it a bit later in the video. The six that I have left to read the one that I'm most interested in getting to, and really the stumbling block of getting to this has been that it's only just arrived from the library. So my caveat for trying to read this entire long list was I had to be able to get them from the library or listen to them on audiobook. And that is And Then She Fell by Alicia Elliott. I think that this one has an absolutely stunning cover and is by an indigenous Canadian author, I believe. Um, I just am really intrigued by this one because I've heard many fewer people talk about this one than any of the other books and the comments that I have heard about it have just really intrigued me. So this will be my next book after The Wren the Wren. Secondly, from the ones I haven't got to yet, I would still like to get to Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad. And the main thing that still is intriguing me about Enter Ghost is the fact that it incorporates Hamlet into it and I read Hamlet relatively recently and would like to see how that has been done within this book. I also had hoped to get to before the <laughs> shortlist announcement The Maiden by Kate Foster and this was one of the ones I was kind of most interested in when the long list was announced because it sounded the most murdery out of the list, the most uh, sort of crime adjacent. I am interested in this historical fiction. I would say the reviews I've heard of it haven't been overwhelmingly positive, although I do feel like this is going to be one of the plottiest books on a not very plotty long list in my eyes. The other three are probably the three I was least interested in when the long list was announced. My feelings have slightly changed and shifted on them over time, but not that much. The sort of bottom three in my mind of ones that I'm interested in would be Night Bloom by Peace Adzo Mede. This book just didn't particularly appeal to me in terms of subject matter, but I have heard pretty good things about it, which has slightly elevated it on the list for me. However, because I wasn't super interested in it, it was one of the few that I didn't immediately 
reserved from the library and because I have so many of them out of the library at the moment I do need to get to those first. And fifth out of six in terms of interest on my list would be Brotherless Night by Vivi Ganeshanathan and I think that I'm definitely in the minority on not particularly being that excited to get to this one. Everyone that has read it that I know has said it's a great book. I fully expect that other people have liked it a lot more than me. I have already tried this one on audio and I haven't DNF'd it as such but I have DNF'd the audiobook. It took me some time to actually reserve this one at the library because I wasn't sure I was interested and initially I thought I was going to audiobook it so it isn't actually arrived at the library yet. I will definitely read this book if it is shortlisted. And finally on my list of ones that I didn't get to is A Trace of Sun by Pam Williams. For some reason this book has just not appealed to me at all. I've had it out of the library for some time. I keep sort of passing it over for other women's prize books. I think I'm very very put off by the cover. I'm not super interested in the sound of the subject matter. If you think that I'm wrong about this book and you think I should pick it up ASAP do let me know in the comments down below because I would love to hear differently. Moving on to three books that I DNF'd. Now all of these I could pick them back up if they are shortlisted without too much bother. None of them were a DNF because I absolutely couldn't stand the book. There just for me was not really much happening that was grabbing me and I was feeling quite slumpy at the time. I didn't want to go further into a slump so I decided it was best to DNF anything that just wasn't grabbing me. So I'm going to talk about these from most likely to return to to least likely to return to and probably most likely would be The Blue Beautiful World by Karen Lord. I made it a relatively long way through this. I made it to page 86 and it is actually only like 238 pages long. My problem with this was that just nothing whatsoever seemed to have happened and we'd not been given any characters to really care about in this and I just think that this book is being done no favours whatsoever being on this long list when it is the third book in a series of sci-fi books and seems to ostensibly have very little happening particularly in those first 86 pages that I read. I suppose if this was shortlisted, which I think is a really really long shot at this point, I would give another go to the second half of the book because it's not that many pages more I guess. The next one would be River East River West by Aubrey Lescure. I picked this one up on audio and I DNF'd it after listening to the first two parts of it and I DNF this one because it had two perspectives. One was a sort of teenage girl and one was her stepfather and I wasn't actually interested in either of them as characters. I didn't think either of them were characters that I cared about at all so I put it down. If this was listed I possibly would pick it up again but it wouldn't be like my top priority. And finally the one I would least like to see shortlisted because I would least like to pick it up again would be a book that wasn't really doing anything wrong, it just wasn't really doing anything right for me as a reader which was Restless Dolly Mourned Up by Kate Grenville. Absolutely love this cover and I absolutely love its end papers as well but I just can't, I just couldn't continue with this and I didn't actually even get that far. I think I got about 30 pages into this and it's a really short book but I could see why Dolly Maunda was restless because I was very very restless reading this book and I just was so so bored by it so I really wouldn't personally want to pick it up again but I may give it a go if it is shortlisted and I've still got time before the winner announcement. There was nothing going on in the book that was interesting me at all and I also didn't really like the writing style sadly. On to my ranking of the six books that I have read and because there are six of them 
it makes it easy for these to be my top six but the one at the bottom will almost inevitably get knocked off this list probably when I read another book. Let's start with my least favourite of the six and work my way up to the most and none of these I particularly disliked although one did make me very angry and we'll start with that one. So in at number six would be Hangman by Maya Binyam. This is just an incredibly weird book that made me quite angry at the end predominantly because I had guessed what was going to happen quite early in the book and I had hoped against hope that that wasn't what the author was doing but it was what the author was doing so I felt a bit cross about that but looking back on it I have grown to think that actually this book had some merit and I wouldn't actually be that surprised if the judges choose this as their shortlist dark horse. That's number six for me out of the six that I have completed. In at number five and from here on in I really did enjoy all of the books in their way. I would pick Ordinary Human Failings by Megan Nolan. I found it quite tricky to order this one and the next book but the overwhelming depressingness of this book made it less of a favourite than the next one I'm going to mention for me. In at number four is Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster by Mirren A. Lee and I thought that this was a really interesting debut novel, sort of made up of short stories but sort of not. I liked what this debut author was attempting and I thought she pulled it off pretty well. Um, it's not a favourite book of all time or anything but I think it had a lot of merit. In number three, the book that has been staunchly at number two for most of the time I've been reading this long list is Western Lane by Chetna Maru. I'm not actually <laughs> expecting to see this on the shortlist and I know that a lot of people have given this book quite a bashing but I personally really, really like this quiet look at one family's grief. I really think that this book had a special something that I just liked and I can't really explain what that was but I just thought it did what it did really well. In at number two would be Soldier Sailor by Claire Kilroy. This was my top favourite for the longest time. It was the first book I read from the long list. I thought that this was a really excellent read. It was great as an audiobook and it's a book that I would sincerely hope will do very very well on this list and I would be more than happy to see it win this prize. It was a really beautiful piece of writing. In my top spot and very unexpectedly for me the most recent book that I have completed on the list is In Defense of the Act by Effie Black. I wasn't expecting this to take the top spot at all and I don't think it will take the judges top spot but I am so happy that the Women's Prize introduced me to this book. I thought it was an excellent debut and I thought that the author just makes really really great observations on life and people and relationships and I thought it was really really well done. That would be the six books that I have read and therefore at the moment the six books that would make my personal shortlist and I will rank these again when I've read as many as I think I'm going to but I think I've reached the point where I probably won't manage to read any more full books before the shortlist other than probably the Ren the Ren. What are my predictions for the shortlist? I think that they will shortlist Soldier Sailor by Claire Kilroy and Ordinary Human Failings by Megan Nolan from the books that I have read and I think that from the books that I haven't read yet we will definitely see The Ren the Ren by Anne Enright. This is really the sort of heavyweight author of the, this list and I would be hugely shocked to see this not make the shortlist even though from what I've read so far it's not necessarily a favourite for me and I've also heard that people who do like Anne Enright's work 
haven't liked this one as much as some of her other books that have been listed for this prize. But I think Anne Enright will make it to the shortlist because of Anne Enright maths that I have been predicting all along, which is that I noticed that Anne Enright is listed for this prize every four years. This is now her fifth listing, I believe, so I would be hugely surprised not to see her on the shortlist and I actually do think that whether or not I enjoy this book I think it's got a very good chance of winning because I think that this might be Anne Enright's year for this prize. With that said that does mean that I'm predicting all three of the Irish authors books to make it to the shortlist which means that that leaves only three places for all of the other authors that come from a plethora of places that are not Ireland, so it's very possible that one of those three Irish authors will not make the shortlist, but this is just what I think might happen. Into those three final places, I think we will see Brotherless Night by Vivi Ganeshanathan. I just haven't heard anything really negative about this book. Everybody who has read it seems to have really enjoyed it and seems to think it's a really, really good novel, so I would not be at all surprised to see that make the shortlist. And I also think that Enter Ghost by Isabella Hamad has got a very, very good chance of being shortlisted. I think the judges might shortlist this because of its setting. Although I have not read it yet, it might well be the most currently relevant topical book on this long list and therefore I think it stands a good chance of being also on the shortlist. So that leaves one spot that could well go to any of the books that I haven't yet read. From the books that I'm most excited about at the moment I would really like to see it go to and then she fell because I think it's possibly offering something a bit different but I don't know because I haven't read it yet and I do think that there's also a good chance that the judges might list one out of two of the debut novels that I have already read, which are Eight Lives of a Century Old Trickster by Mirren A. Lee or Hangman by Maya Binyam. I think either of these would fulfil like a sort of dark horse role on this shortlist and I think that Eight Lives would do that because it is such a brutal book that it won't be for everybody and I think that Hangman could do that because it's such a bizarre book that it won't be for everybody. So I do think there's an outside chance we will see the judges list one of those two and of those two I would obviously hope it will be Eight Lives but I think it could be Hangman. So that's really the closest that I can get to predicting the six books that I think the judges will list. Um, I know I've said seven, but I really don't think I can narrow it down any further, especially as I haven't managed to even try six of the books as yet. So those are my predictions. You've heard my ranking and my wish list. What do you think is going to be on the judges shortlist next week? I would love to hear from you. Let me know in the comments, what is your top tip for this prize? or what are your six that you think will make it, whether you've read them or not. Maybe if you haven't read any, are there any that you still look forward to getting hold of on reading? And if you have read any, did you have a favourite? Very much looking forward to the announcement next Wednesday. I will of course be reacting to it with my plod along friends and fellow hosts, Gemma from Gemma Books and Charlie from Charlie Brook Reads. The live show for this will be over on Gemma's channel and will probably take place at 8pm. I really don't know what to think at this point. I've enjoyed reading some of the list. Some of the list I find a bit baffling and I think that rightly or wrongly I'm judging these judges to perhaps not be fans of hugely plotty books. The books this year of the 16 that I've read do seem to be sort of low on plot, high on uh, character. There are obviously exceptions to that but that's my observation. That's all from me today. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you'll give this video a like if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you don't have a comment to leave today, please do leave me an emoji to let me know that you were here and you watched it and that emoji could be 
anything to do with any of the books I have talked about. And I will hope very much to see you all again soon for another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now. <laughs>